two months, um, students in the O'Keeffe Pre-Law Studies program have been working with Explore Elementary. And we've been um, looking at a crime scene. And our crime scene experts are going to tell us evidence that they found at the crime scene. And what's the word I've been using with you guys? Astute, right? Who can tell me what that means? Did we forget? <laughs> Astute, does that mean you're a good investigator? Yes. yes. So these investigators were very astute. They found things in the crime scene that we had no idea uh, were there. And based on their evidence, charges were brought against the Lulocks. And so uh, fifth and sixth grade prepared a case for trial. And so we're going to have the trial in just a few minutes. But all of this is a special blessing uh, to me to see students develop verbal reasoning and analysis and critical thinking skills. And first of all, it bodes well for the future of the program. You, you guys have some good successors. I'm sorry, Judge. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also, I think it bodes well for the kingdom of God. It's, it's a really a blessing to work with each one of you students. And I know that God has special plans for the skills that he's developing. No matter what profession, whether you become a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, anything. So you can use these skills however you like. So today, we're going to have fun. Who's ready to have fun? We're going to have fun. I know sometimes nerves get a little excited uh, right now, but we're going to have a good time. We're going to be respectful. There's a lot of listening in trial. Right, guys? When it's not our turn, it's, we have to listen. And then sometimes it, can, it feels boring, but then something very important might be happening. So we're going to listen to each other. We're going to encourage each other. And most of all, have fun. So I'd like to open up with a word of prayer. And then we're going to hear from our experts in just a moment. OK? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for what you are doing in the hearts and minds of each one of the students here. I pray that you would calm any nerves. I pray that you would be glorified by what we do here today. And I pray that this learning process would plant seeds for the future. We ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. And prior to the start of trial, we have six experts, and they're each going to tell you something that they have found at the crime scene. Okay. Because I found Goldilocks' fingerprints on Baby Bear's bowl and Papa Bear's cup, in my expert opinion, the porridge was gone, so we know that she was at the table. Because I found Goldilocks' whole left-hand print, and most people are right-handed, so she must have been hanging and eating with her right hand, so she must have not sat in the chair. Because I found there was an open house sign outside that said Saturday, October 6th, and is the same day that Goldilocks broke in, Saturday, October 6th. Since Goldilocks broke in the same day as the open house, Goldilocks, in my expert opinion, Goldilocks does not have enough evidence to prove she trespassed. Because I found a checklist that said buy new chairs and it was not checked off, so Goldilocks may not have broke the chair. So I don't think, so in my expert opinion, I don't think she deliberately destroyed property. Because I found Baby Bear's fur and fingerprints on the Wii controller, and there was still no TV, and as Martina previously had said, she was leaning over the table, and she left her sample, and she left her hair samples on the Wii controller. I think Goldilocks brought it and left it. I also think there is a TV somewhere in the house. In my expert opinion, there isn't a clear sign of vandalism. Because we found hair outside in the house, inside the house, and on the table, fabric around the table, a broken chair with no evidence that she broke it, in my expert opinion is there's no clear evidence of vandalism. researching the crime scene, and those are excellent observations. Will the court receive the testimony of the expert witnesses at this time? Yes, the court receives the testimony of the expert witnesses. Okay, and I believe we're ready to now start the trial phase. The jurors, are you ready? Yes. Okay, I now call 
the case of State versus Goldilocks to order. And I'll now hear the opening statement for the state, which is the prosecution. So that's y'all. Good, good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Today you will see why Goldilocks was accurately accused of criminal trespass and vandalism. On Saturday, October 6th, she deliberately broke into the Bears' house. The CSI stated that they found Goldilocks's hair on the chairs and her fingerprints on the bowls and cups. She went there to play Fort Day, but there were no fingerprints on the controller. You will hear from Rena Rabbit that Papa Bear is a safe person and will make sure no lock is broken. Baby Bear will state that the open house was closed that day. And finally, Andy will announce that the lock on the front door was clearly broken. That's all. Good afternoon, I am Sayla and I am def on defense of Goldilocks and I have proof that she did not do, we have proof that she did not do criminal trespass because she had permission from her mother, mama bear, and baby, baby bear. There's proof of this in four affidavit, affidavits. We know she did not do vandalism because the house was already a mess and it states that in Andy Griffith, baby bear, and Papa Bear's affidavit. Okay, so that's all with opening statements. So now we're going to move on to direct exam of Baby Bear. So Baby Bear, you may come up to the stage. And then whoever is doing the direct examination of Baby Bear, can you come up? Okay, and now the bailiff is going to swear you. Can you have your left hand the Bible right hand? Do you swear to say the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guys? Yes. What is your name? My name is Baby Bear. What were you doing on Saturday the 6th? On Saturday the 6th, I was out with my family at the pumpkin patch. After the festival, when did you get back home? We got home around lunchtime. And when you went inside after the festival, was your house in shape? Nope, my porridge was eaten and my favorite chair was broken. What did you notice when you went inside? I noticed that Baby Bear, I mean, I noticed that Goldilocks was sleeping in my bed. And what was outside of your house? A no trespassing sign. Did you expect Goldilocks to come over? No, I did not, because we were not home. Why not? Like, why did Goldilocks She's not? always too busy to play, because she has um, professional gymnastics. That is all. So your name is Baby Bear, as I understand? Yes. <laughs> Where do you go to school? I go to school at Happy Valley School. What are, you, what are the names of your friends? Chip Chipmunk, Goldilocks Goldberg, and... Yeah, and a few other people. Do you invite them to your house often? Yes, I do. Did you invite them over on the day of the break-in? Yes, I did, but I didn't expect Goldilocks to come because she's always way too busy to play. Did she say she couldn't come? She told me she was coming over, but I never responded telling her that she could. Mm. Uh. When you got home, did you see uh, the open house sign not taken down? Yes. That is all. Thank you. Okay, and with that, Baby Bear may be excused. Now we're going to have the direct examination of Officer Andy Griffith.
can about right here near it. You swear I say the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Good afternoon. What is your name? Andy Griffith. Can you tell us about yourself? I have worked in the Happy Valley Police Department for six happy long years, and I currently hold the rank of a sergeant. What is crime like in Happy Valley? Hasn't been much, but lately there's been quite a few break-ins and crimes. I'd like to draw your attention to October 6th. Did anything suspicious happen that day? Yes, there was a crime that happened at the Bears' house. What time around did you get there? I got the call at 12, and I got there at 12-12. What did you do when you got inside? I walked in and I looked around and the house was a big mess and everything. It was in disarray. Who was the person in here? I saw Goldilocks Goldberg sleeping on Baby Bear's bed. After you arrested Goldilocks, did you keep searching the home? Yes, I did. Like I said, it was very messed up, but what I noticed was there was a broken lock on the door. Were you able to investigate in any text messages? Yes, I did. There were very su some very suspicious text messages from Goldilocks to Chip Chipmunk and Baby Bear. So what you were saying about the lock, you said that there was a lock, and do you think Goldilocks actually broke in? Yes, yes I do. Do you know why she broke in? I think that it may be out of jealousy. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, and now is there a cross-examination of Officer Griffith? Hello. You are the officer who arrested Goldilocks, correct? Yes. You know she came from Big City, correct? Yes, I do. You said in your affidavit that Big City is known for their violence and gangs, correct? I said that, but I had nothing against them. You said there have been a recent strings of burglaries and break-in in Happy Valleys, correct? Yes. In your affidavit, you also said that you blame the rising crime on people who are moving from the big, from big city, correct? Yes, but like I said, I have nothing against them. They're just the ones who are found guilty. You assume that Goldilocks was a 10-year-old criminal because she was from big city, correct? Yes. Thank you. Where they say the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yeah. What is your name? Rena Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you at the time of the break in? I was sitting in my chair in my room. How long have you lived in the Woods Walk neighborhood? I've lived over 12 years. Did you know that the Bears, Bear family, went to the Pumpkin Festival? No, I thought they were home at the time. How long have you known the Bears? I've known them under 12 years. Are the Bears private people? Yes. Have you seen Goldilocks or around the neighborhood before? No, I've never seen her before. Did the Bear family have anything in the yard? Um, they had a no trespassing sign. Do you know if Papa Bear is a safe person? Papa Bear is a safe person because after my husband Richard died, he replaced all the locks on my door to make sure I was in safe. Did you see Goldilocks try to attempt to open the door or break the lock? No, I just saw her walk up to the door. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. And now is there a cross-examination of Rena
you are Rena Rabbit, correct? Correct. You saw the girl ring the doorbell, right? Correct. But you knew that the possum's grandchildren were in town, right? Correct. So is it possible that the screaming were from the possum's grandchildren? Yes. So you cannot confirm that you saw Goldilocks, right? I saw her walk up to the door, but that's it. Thank you, that is all. Excuse me. <laughs> do you swear to say the truth, the whole truth, yes. and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Could you please state your name for the court? My name is Paul Bear. My friends and my happy customers call me Papa Bear. Where do you live? It's in the woods. It's in Happy Valley. Do you currently have a job? Do I have a job? <laughs> yes, I have a job. I like to fix things up. Papa Bear fix it up shop, that's what I run. Why did you buy the house you're currently living in? <laughs> like I said, it's kind of in the woods. It's secluded, it makes me happy, not too many people around, have a real big yard. Why did you change the locks for Rena Rabbit? Rena, that's my friend. She's had some struggles in her life, and I went ahead and just fixed her locks up to make her feel safe. Why are you moving? Well, I got family, and my, my little boy, Baby Bear, he needs more friends to play with. How do you feel about Baby Bear's friends? They're just kids. I like them. Do you and Lee go to the pumpkin festival? Pardon me? Do you and Lee go to the pumpkin festival? Oh, yes. Every year we go to that pumpkin festival. It's so much fun. What is your relationship with Rena Rabbit like? Very close. Very, very close. Lives across the way from us. We look after one another. That is all. Thank you. And the cross-examination of Papa Bear. Your name is Papa Bear, correct? Paul Bear, but if you're a friend of mine, you can call me Papa Bear. You planned to clean the house, but you never did, right? Could you say that again? You planned to clean the house, but you never did. Well, sometimes right? I got an important business to do, and I can't always get to my chores. You waited a long time till you realized that you never took the sign down, right? That's probably one of those chores I didn't get to. When you got home, the house was very messy, correct? <laughs> That's what my wife says quite frequently, <laughs> yes. But didn't, uh, but didn't you leave it messy? Well, you know that I got a little boy, right? So sometimes it's him and me that we make a bit of a mess. So you live in Happy Valley, right? Happy Valley it is. You love where you live, right? It's been good for nearly 12 years. It's been a pretty good neighborhood. So you're selling the home that you live in right now, correct? We're trying really, really hard. Nobody wants to buy it, though. You run a fix-it shop, right? The best in town. I can fix anything. Let me know if you need something. You are not aware that Baby Bear invited Goldilocks on October 5th to come over and play Fort Day on October 6th? I was not aware of that. Absolutely not. Thank you. That is all. Thank you.
about all the witnesses that the prosecution wanted to call? I know there's defense witnesses, but is that all for the prosecution? Okay, so the defense may call its first witness, which I believe is Goldilocks Goldberg. As far as tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yeah. <laughs> Goldilocks, what did you text Baby Bear about the new game Fort Day? I was hoping he would win. And... Did you see any tools on the floor? Was it messy? It was the messiest thing ever, and it also smelled bad. But there was, like, wood and tools, and, like, it was it was really, really messy. Are you good friends with Baby, tell, but baby Bear? Did you tell us about that? Yeah, we're really, really, really good friends. Okay. Um, Goldilocks, you said you were invited to the bear's house. Who invited you, and when did they invite you? Baby Bear invited me to his house the day before, and Mama Bear and uh, my mom, Gilda, both said that I could go. Did you deliberately destroy any property of the bears? No. Like, there was, like, some broken stuff. Like, there was a broken chair when I got in, but I didn't break anything on purpose. Goldilocks, what happened when you arrived at the bear home? Um, I knocked on the door for a while, and then no one answered, so I thought they were home, and I opened the door. Baby Bear said that you were always welcome to their home t to play. Yeah, all the time he did, but I could never come over. But then that one weekend he invited me and I could come. Okay. When you arrived, were there, was there an open house sign in the front? Yep, it was. It said open house in big letters. And yeah, there was a big, big, big open house sign. Did you walk in and make a mess, or was it messy when you got there? It was messy when I got there. I'm not at all a messy person, so why would I make a mess in someone else's house? <laughs> Thank you. That will be all. Okay. And the cross-examination of You went to Baby Bear's house after you ate breakfast, correct? Uh, yeah, I had eaten breakfast before I went. You knew where his house was, right? No. I mean, actually, yeah. <laughs> okay. You got lost on the way there, right? Yeah, kinda. Even though you knew where his house was, you got lost? Yeah. <laughs> you knocked on the door, didn't you? Yeah, for a really long time. <laughs> no one answered, isn't that true? Yeah, I just assumed they were home doing something. You saw the no trespassing sign, correct? No, what no trespassing sign are you talking about? Okay. You didn't touch the console, even though that's what you came there to play? Uh, no, because... Uh, Baby Bear wasn't playing with it, so I didn't want to, like, I don't know, mess it up. And even after all of that, you slept in a bed that wasn't yours. I mean, 
I had been lost in the woods for who knows how long. Wouldn't you be tired? That is all, Your Honor. What is your name? Cal William. Cal Williams. What is your profession? I'm a realtor. What makes you such a good realtor? I've been doing this for over 12 years and everywhere at Happy Valley and a lot of different places. What is your relation to Papa Bear? I um, helped him get this house in the first place. That's how I know him. I would like to turn your attention to the open house side. Did you ask Papa Bear to take down the open house sign? Yes, I did. Did Papa Bear agree to take down the open house sign? Yes, he did. Did you find his words trustworthy? Yes, but over the years, he has been very lazy. So I did, but I've known him for a long time, so yes. (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever seen Papa Bear make... A promise he doesn't keep. Yes, many times. (laughs) Are you surprised about the occurrence of this incident? No, I'm not. (laughs) From your observations, do you think Papa Bear unintentionally invited Goldilocks? Um, no. This is all. You are a local realtor, correct? Correct. You generally refuse listings in Woodswalk, correct? Correct. So you're not familiar with the area, right? Um, not as much, but I did um, get Papa Bear the house and his family. However, you were doing listing for the bears. Correct. So have you known the bears family for years? Yes, for 12 years, as a matter of fact. You did a listing for the Bears around 12 years ago, is that right? Correct. The Bears house that you are listing now doesn't have a lot of interest, is that right? Um, no. Papa Bear agreed to an open house on October 6th, right? Correct. But you got sick and, and had to cancel the open house, correct? Correct. But it is your job to keep the listing running, right? I know, but I would have got a lot of people sick, so... It's your job to take down the sign and keep order of the house, open house, correct? No, I ordered Papa Bear to do it, and he didn't. The Bear's house is still for sale, correct? Correct. That is all. Left hand about right hand there. <laughs> Do you swear to say the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. Chip Chipmunk, do you attend Happy Valley Elementary School? Yes. Who are your friends? Max Mole, Baby Bear, and Goldilocks Goldberg. Is Goldilocks a good friend? Uh, yeah, she was new, but she quickly became a really good friend. Have you ever been to Baby Bear's house? Um, because
related to the charges in the holy box. So why does the jury know, need to know they were good friends? That she's like not like really a bad person that much. She's like a nice friend. Okay. So I am going to overrule the objection, but feel free to make more objections if there's anything else. <laughs> Have you ever been to Baby Bear's house? Yes. How often does Baby Bear invite Goldilocks? Um, he invites everyone over at the same time, but Goldilocks can't always come. Do you always go to the play dates? Um, not just, well, usually, but I can't sometimes because his house is far away. On October 5th, didn't Baby Bear invite you, Max Mull, and Goldilocks to his house? Yes. Does Baby Bear tell you and your other friends you're welcome anytime? Yes. In your affidavit, it says, it said that Baby Bear invited everyone over on the weekend to play Fort Day. Is that true? That is true. When do you mostly meet up? Um, usually after school. Well, actually, usually on the weekends, but sometimes after school. Why do you like to go to Baby Bear's house? Because he has his own gaming den, and his mom makes really good cookies. That is all. It's true, it's true that you're friends with Goldilocks, Baby um, Bear. Oh. Yeah, it's true that you're friends with Goldilocks, Baby Bear, and Maximal, correct? Yeah, that is true. And you hang out with Baby Bear, correct? Regularly, correct? Uh, yes. And Baby Bear invites you guys to his house a lot, correct? That is true. But Goldilocks can never come because of activities. Yeah. Baby Bear invited Goldilocks on a you and Goldilocks on October fifth, correct? No, yeah, that's correct. And three days later, you found Goldilocks with scratches all over her face, correct? Correct. And she told you she was lost in the woods. Correct. And Baby Bear didn't sit with her at lunch, correct? Correct. And he called him the intruder, correct? Correct. And you wish that you guys were all friends again? Yeah. Okay, that's all. Okay, thank you. And the witness may be excused. Okay, so I think, Judge, just if you could take a pause, I think uh, the team defense wanted to make a quick objection just to note on the record. Okay. Did you have an idea what you wanted to object to in particular? Yeah. about what was asked on direct and you can bring up. But that's a really good objection. That's really good that you caught that though. So, but I am going to overrule good, it. Good ears. Good ear, good listening. Okay. Is there another, there may be one yes, other one to know one. on the record, go ahead. Oh. If you, if they, if, uh, how was the question, do you wish you could all be friends again, relevant to the case? So. Okay, that's a really good question. So with, um, with relevance, there is a lot of things that are relevant in a case, especially a criminal case. So since that question did talk about Goldilocks' character, like how she acted, I felt that it was relevant because it would show if she would or wouldn't commit a crime. But that's a really good question. Good objections with good ears on those. Okay. So now I believe the defense would like to call its last witness, Gilda Goldberg. Okay, so Gilda, Miss Goldberg. Sure. Can I tell the truth? 
truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. <coughs> what is your name? Gilda Goldberg. And Mrs. Goldberg, how are you related to Goldilocks? I am her mother. In your affidavit, it said that you moved from Big City. Why did you move? I moved to, es to escape the high crime area of Big City. Was Goldilocks a good girl? Yes, I do believe that Goldilocks was a good girl because I kept her busy in activities such as cheerleading and violin. Where was Goldilocks going that exact day? She was going to Baby Bear's house on Saturday, October 6th. Did Goldilocks know where she was going? Yes, her bus drove by Woodswalk every morning. Did Baby Bear invite Goldilocks? Yes, Goldilocks was invited at school while she was sitting at the lunch table and she was invited on Friday, October 5th. Have you ever met Mama Bear in person? Yes, I met Mama Bear at the PTA meeting. And at the PTA meeting, did Mama Bear ever say that Goldilocks was always welcome? Yes, she did say that Goldilocks was welcome. Was Mama Bear being very sincere when she said always welcome? Yes, I do believe that Mama Bear was incredibly sincere. That's all, Your Honor. <laughs> Thank you. You were Goldilocks's mother, correct? Correct. You used to live in a high crime area, correct? Correct. Would you say living in big city had an influence on your family? Not really. Do you have a good, moving on, do you have a good relationship with your daughter? Yes, I do believe that I have a good relationship with her. Your daughter is a busy girl, wouldn't you say? Yes. So she has no time for video games or any time to hang out with her friends? Correct. This is too much for one person to handle, wouldn't you say? Not much, I do it to keep her busy so she, didn't get, so she doesn't get into criminal activity. Don't you think that a person with a criminal background would act out in a certain way out of anger and jealousy? No. Have you ever asked your daughter what she wants to do? Yes. Has she ever told you that she doesn't want to do any of her activities? No, not that I know of. Your daughter left her house with her phone on her, correct? Yes. Has she ever not called for help? Not that I know of. Did you know previously about the break-in? Yes. After Officer Andy Griffin called me at around 1 o'clock. Don't you think Goldilocks did this from anger or uh, jealousy out of her friends' conversations and anger out of not having the freedom to do what she wants to do? No. That is all. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. My name is Matthew. As you heard today, Goldilocks was clearly found, her fingerprints were clearly found on the table, and she was found in Baby Bear's bed, which is definitive evidence that she was in the house and in trespassing. Uh, and also, there was porridge gone, so um, she obviously ate, and so there, she was good friends with, with Baby Bear, but she also heard that they had a bunch of freedom, and she was pro she probably broke some of the some things in there out of anger because she couldn't she didn't have the freedom to do this herself. She uh, couldn't come most of the time, which meant that Baby Bear didn't expect her, and that 
she, it, well, she came unannounced. Mm-hmm. That is all. Okay, thank you. So now we'll hear closing argument for the defense. Dear ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have heard today clear evidence that Gorilux had no intention of deliberately destroying property or entering property without permission. As you have seen today, Goldilocks has shown no evidence of criminal trespass because Goldilocks was invited on Friday, October 5th. Mama Bear also said to Gilda Goldberg that Goldilocks was always welcome. Finally, at the scene of the crime, Papa Bear forgot to remove the open house sign, and there was no time on the open house. As you have also seen, Goldilocks did not intentionally destroy property because Baby Bear ate some of his porridge, which means Goldilocks didn't have anything to do with some of the porridge missing. In the affidavit of Rena Rabbit, she said that she dropped off a broken rocking chair, which was the same rocking chair the bears accused Goldilocks of breaking. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, after all of the evidence presented proving that Goldilocks is innocent, it is now into your hands to make justice prevail. Thank you, Your Honor. to object to. She didn't say like the truth of what happened, like yeah. about the chair. So it was, it was a conflict with her testimony? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay so, so the broken rocking chair <laughs> part, is that what we're talking yeah. about yeah. here? Yeah. Okay, so I'll look at the affidavit. Okay. Regarding the broken rocking chair, you're saying that's not in the... So, and there's another comment on the same point. Is there another comment? <laughs> Go ahead. So Baby Bear stated in his affidavit that that wasn't a rocking chair, it was his favorite TV watching chair, and that he's had it. Yeah. This happened recently when they were just dropping it off. I don't think if it was dropped off so recently, it could have been his favorite TV chair. Okay. Can he get okay. another one? Yeah, so the court chair. will re- well, receive the objection and make note of any discrepancies with the actual affidavit. And in court, we would do that too. We would point out a discrepancy between a previous statement and the current statement, because we want to make sure we have the actual statement. I'm going to ask the judge just to remind the jury of the charges and what the charges mean before they have a quick time to decide the case. Okay. So now I will be giving instructions to the jury. So listen up. So (laughs) we want to make sure we get justice here. So. The first charge is criminal trespass, which is entering property without permission. The second charge is vandalism, which is defined as deliberately destroying private property. So now I will call recess report to, or for the jury to deliberate. All right, so everybody just stay in your seats. Our jury's going to step out and quietly deliberate, which means they're going to talk about what they just heard. All of your questions, all of your answers. Let me just tell you something, guys. All of your answers, witnesses, your answers actually make evidence for the court so that the jury has to discuss what you said and decide what they believe the most out of the evidence presented. So they're going to think about that, and they're going to come back in just a minute or two with what's called a verdict, and that means a decision, and the verdict is to speak the truth. That's what it means. So they're going to speak the truth based on what they heard from today's uh, testimony. So um, I'm just going to check. The jury is actually deliberating. They are making their decision based on what they have said. Nobody knows how they're going to decide. Just hang tight for one more minute, and we'll have the conclusion of our trial. So um, does the jury have a verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Please read the verdict. In the case... Bears v. Goldilocks Goldberg. We, the jury, find the defendant, Goldilocks Goldberg, as to the charge of criminal trespass, which is defined as entering a property without permission, not guilty. 
As to the charge of vandalism, which is defined as deliberately destroying private property, we find the defendant not guilty. This is the fourth year we've done this, Mrs. Anderson. And I have to say that it was the highest quality questioning and answering and openings and closings. Astute, I can use that word for you as well as the uh, CSI investigators. Um, our jurors have taken notes about what evidence ha um, influenced their decision. So they'll finalize the notes and we'll share it with Mrs. Anderson who can share it with the team. Um, but don't be disappointed if the verdict didn't go for your client. That happens all the time in real life, in real law. Uh, you have to do the best job that you can with the evidence that you're presented with. And I think you did that today. So congratulations. Let's have a round of applause for everybody.